Well, the preamble of our constitution clearly states that India is a secular state. It says, India is a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. And a secular state is when the state officially does not have any religion of its own. And why did India actually adopt a secular state status. The riots which India had seen during the partition, the fight between Hindus and the Muslims made the leaders understand that religion should not play a very big role in politics. That is, the state should be devoid of any religion and everybody should be allowed to stay in India as Indians and not as Hindus, Sikh, Buddhist or Christians. And this in fact was a very wise thing they did because only when we feel as Indians and not as belonging to a particular religion can make a country a healthy and prosperous country. Well, you all know that India is a secular state as I have been stressing again and again and all people that is the constitution of India says that all people are free to profess and propagate the religion of their choice. That is nobody can actually force on you that you have to follow a particular religion or you are supposed to be a, a part of a particular religion or you are actually supposed to be hating a religion. Every religion is equal in the eyes of law. No discrimination whether in the religion, whether in the educational institutions or in the jobs, professions or in the legislative assemblies, in the elections. No discrimination can be made whatever, however, wherever in India on the basis of religion. All people of India are free to move wherever they want to, to pick up any religion, sorry, to pick up any profession that they want to or actually to lead the life that they want to. Next, it is absolutely true that the state is devoid of any religion. That is, the state has nothing to do with religion. But in certain cases, that is at certain places when it is required, the state can interfere in the religion of the people. For example, when untouchability had to be abolished, when the Dalits of this country had to be given equal status, when they had to be made felt like human beings as being equal to the other people, then the state had to interfere and make laws in the religion. That is, maybe the religion had this that there were certain sections of the society according to the Varanas that they have, the Brahmins, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas and the Shudras, they felt that some were equal or superior and others were at a lower pedestal. So, the government of India had to interfere in the religion of the people and safeguard the interest of the so-called untouchables, the minority section or the Dalits or the Harijans as Gandhi called them. You must clearly understand that secularism is not the idea of just few sections of the people or of certain political parties. It is in fact the foundation of our nation. And when secularism turns and takes a dirty turn and communalism enters into our country, it is a big threat to the unity of our country. So, a secular state like India should just be peaceful and there should be peaceful coexistence, people should be happy and there should be no threat, 
no communal violence and no disunity in the country on the basis of religion. That's a true secular state and that's a true democracy because a true democratic government believes first of all in equality, equality in all forms and of course in religion too. Okay, I'll continue in the next clipping.